In 1994, Lydia Tet Olet left the country for the UK in search of a better life. But unlike most people, she did not have any idea of what she was going to do while there. All she knew is that she needed a change. She is now the CEO of Malaika Dance Unique, a performing arts company based in the United Kingdom. And this is her story. You can become whatever you want to become, but there's only one person who can stop you, and that person is yourself. Lydia Tert Olet is a mother, producer, dancer, actress, and event organizer. She has lived in the United Kingdom for about 24 years, but was brought up in the suburb of Isili in Nairobi. And as she narrates, her childhood was one filled with a lot of difficulty. I wouldn't really say we were poor per se, but I would say my dad misplaced his priorities really. And so because of that, we really struggled financially. Sometimes we used to go to school without shoe. Uh, we, we used to go without food or we'd drink strongy without um, scary, you know. And sometimes the landlord would come and say, we've not paid the rent. And then they would chuck us out of the house. So my mom and my brother, remember my mom and my brother, they would sleep outside because the, the landlord would take all our stuff outside. And my mom would sleep there. And then my uncle, bless him, he would take us, the ladies, and we'd sleep in his house because he, he had a, just a small room and we sleep there. So growing up as a child, it wasn't really nice for me. Unfortunately, this also affected her schooling. It was difficult because if you're going to school, you've not had your breakfast, and then sometimes you're going to school, you have no shoes, and other children are laughing at you. Why would I want to go to school, really? Due to this, in 1992, once she had completed her O levels, Lydia decided to venture a different path. I just wanted to do performing arts because that's all I've always done. I've always been a dancer. So I just wanted to dance. So I now made a deal with my mom. I said, look, I want to go to college, but you can't afford to pay for my college. So I told her, okay, when I, go to, when I do dancing, my payment, my wages, I'll pay for my college. And when I finish my college, I'll stop dancing and do secretarial. So Lydia joined the African Heritage Limited, which was co-founded by Alan Donovan and started her training as a traditional dancer. So it was totally traditional dance. When we wear our makonge uh, and we have all those uh, orangos and owalo and, and t-shirts. So it wasn't, it wasn't club dancing or anything. It was pure African dance. So I started dancing with um, Jabali Africa. And there's another one also that was called Dajo. So I was dancing with Dajo as well. And I also joined the Mushrooms. We used to just travel in Dubai a lot. And we went to Tanzania with the mushrooms. And then we went to Switzerland with the mushrooms. And then we went to London with the mushrooms. And when we went to London, I said, I'm coming back. I don't know how, I'm coming back mm -hmm. to London. True to her words, upon arriving in Kenya, Lydia began planning on how she would relocate to the UK. And with the help of her aunt, she secured a ticket and left the country in December 1994 for London. But what was her plan? I didn't have one. <laughs> I didn't have one, to be honest. All I thought is, I like this country. My sister is here. I'm going back. Did I even think what I'm going to do? No. Did I think of where I'm going to stay? No. Did I think of how I'm going to survive? I was just a young girl. All those things I didn't think. You know when you're young? I didn't think of those things. I just thought I'm going back because these people are nice. Much to her dismay, the experience was not what she expected. Wow. Shock. Culture shock. It was so difficult. It was so difficult. And, um, <laughs> wow, I remember just crying. Because now you're in a strange land. You're by yourself. You don't have any friends that you call. Nothing. It's only you. Everybody works in diaspora. Everybody just works. Home, church, mosque, people want clubbing, club, work, chat. that's it. No really friends, no, you know. And then everybody's um, is suspicious. One minute you hear, Anani Ali Rudishwa, Anani Ali Rudishwa, because they said something. So you're just alone. To make matters worse, the place she had been living in London did not have the best living conditions. And that house, we were like, 
20 Kenyans in one room. <laughs> some people are sleeping on the floor, some people are sleeping on the bed, you know. She, however, did not let this deter her from making something of her life. Through talking to people and everything, I got a job to work in a hotel. It's called Chambermaid. They'll give you like 10 rooms. Mm -hmm. And those 10 rooms, they just give you a time limit that you have to finish. So, of course, me, I'll go far now. Araka, araka, I'm a Kenyan. I eat ugali. Come on with fish. Finish. I'm done. So, they gave me a promotion. And after that, of course, now I started working, getting my money. And as luck would have it, four years later, Lydia got her dream job. I met this guy who they were just singing in a, we went I think we went to a club and they were singing and dancing and I was like wow me I said I'm going to dance my friends were like ah Lydia you can't do that I said I'm going to dance watch me I'm glad I did so I went and I joined them on stage and every step they were doing I was doing every step they were doing I was doing and then the guy when we finished the guy was like wow you are good I said yeah because I'm a dancer so where do you dance I said nowhere I just this is what I do and then he said you know I'm gonna give you a number Call this guy and tell them that you're a dancer. So in 1998, Lydia began working at the Adijo Pan-African Dance Ensemble as a dancer. And it was like a full-time job. We used to enter, we used to start at nine, nine to five. Dancing, come on. So we rehearse every day. And then um, sometimes, because it's a lot of us, some people go to schools to facilitate workshops in schools, or some people sometimes will travel. So from there, as a dancer, I now started learning different skills. So I now uh, enrolled and I started learning how to teach drums. I started learning how to tell stories and how to work with kids. Lydia decided to make use of these new skills and in 2008, she started Malaika Dance Unique, a performing arts company specialized in performing and teaching the African culture, mostly through traditional dance, but also through storytelling and crafting of African ornaments. In addition, Lydia also started Kenyans and Friends in the Park in 2015, an annual forum that brings together Kenyans, institutions and organizations that are based in Kenya and abroad, as well as other communities, for a day of fun, learning, networking, connecting and investing. I wanted people to invest back home because what happens is we send so much money so much money is being sent from diaspora and also it was about our children as well children in the uk some of them don't even know their culture some of them don't even speak their language so now when they came when they come to kenya in the park and they see all this and they're like wow they think that's how kenya is they think that's kenya and they're like no that's not kenya that's just a tip so you need to go there Since 2015, the event has been free for the last four years. But from 2019, we're going to uh, charge a minimum fee of uh, adults from 16 and above, will be like £10, which is equivalent to maybe 1,200 Kenya shillings. And then 16 and under, we're just going to charge them £1, which is just like 120 Kenya shillings. And under five is totally free. But this is not the only way that Lydia is giving back to her homeland. I do work with charities. The main one is actually Shama Splendid Center is a secondary school and is based in Kibera. And we also have CMI. CMI is based in Nakuru, uh, some Subukia. And we also have um, Good Hearted Friends. Good Hearted Friends is based in Ahero, Kisumu. I'm also a motivational speaker. I go to events, I speak in events. So in the school, the Shama school, I've taken that as my personal project. So I always go to that school all the time I'm here and I go and I speak to them. Because what I know is you can give clothes and shoes and, and food and everything. But if there's mind, if you don't change the mindset, then what's the point of all that? Lady says that through her experience, she's been able to learn a lot and it is for this reason that she does not regret her decision 
to move to London. Because it's allowed me to see the other part of, not just the part of the world, but the part of, of living and thinking and uh, working as well. And it's also opened doors for me to see how to judge to, or to look at people. If I was like really well off, a person in Kenya, I will not go to the, I will not leave my country. It's really hard, UK is really hard. So if you have a life here, you're doing well and everything, do not abandon what you're doing and say, I'm going to, I'm going abroad. It's not worth it. Lydia's story is one of boldness and a testament to what one can achieve with determination and passion. Until next time, I'm Michael Zimanji. Oh, yeah.